Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now in the last episode, I focused on adding a large national park and nature trail to the northern peninsula of the map, complete with its own mountain lodge and several rental cabins. It's super cozy. I'm very happy with how it's all come together. Now that it's all in place, we just need to give it a little bit more time to attract some more visitors so we can expand out a few more of those nature trails, complete with their own unique buildings in the future. Now in the meantime, I'm very excited to say that we're going to be doing a large expansion to the downtown area of the city today with lots of unique buildings, all located in a brand new pedestrian area, complete with their own offices, commerce, and residential opportunities. Let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited to get started today on this big, large urban development. We haven't really had one in quite a long time, at least not significantly. We had this little patch here called Madison, which is a decent little expansion, but nothing too crazy. I just wanted to very quickly just give a shout out to the suburbs. We've been neglecting them for a long time and we're gonna continue to do so. But every now and then I zoom out and I go like, this actually looks pretty good. And they've been just, you know, doing their thing for the last d couple of decades, really. Since we built their little parks and we sorted out the traffic by doing the new district overhaul where everyone has their own buses, the place just runs great. You know, there's not much traffic. Everyone seems happy. Everything's great. So. Shout out to the suburbs, the backbone of our city, because we wouldn't have been able to build the downtown had it not been for the launch pad that this provided us with. So just shout out. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to continue to look at this area. This is where we're going to be building a large urban development pedestrian area. However, just going to tease you along for a couple of minutes while we just quickly take a look at the nature reserve and the trail leading up to it and see how things are shaping up. So I've added in, sprinkled in a few more trees making the area look a little bit more dense. Of course, as time goes on, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're gonna splinter the nature trail into lots of different directions, filling out the area much more. But for now, until we wait for it to build up, no real point to do that. We're totally content with what we've got. At the request of several comments, I've actually added a shuttle bus into the area. So there's four buses that are running now for free because this is its own district, which now has a free public transportation policy. So shuttle buses will take you right from the bottom of the trail here, or I keep saying trail, this is a dirt road that now actually features a trail next to it, in case people just want to walk up, which is what a lot of people were doing anyway. But they were kind of blocking the road a little bit, so I decided, hey, let's give them their own path, and that comes baked in with lights. So now at nighttime, the place lights up, it looks much better, and people are walking that trail, and for the lazy MFers who don't want to walk, they can get that shuttle bus for free, that'll take them right up to the entrance gate, of the National Park, or it'll take them right around as well to the Mountain Lodge, and I've also made this a one-way road that kind of continues in. Now, you normally can't make a one-way road out of the dirt roads that are available to you, but just using TMPE to tell people, like, you can't turn left here, you can't uh, turn right here, for instance, you can't go left or right if you're coming back out this way. We're able to block the junctions, basically, and prevent them using them, so that way, we've effectively created a one-way loop that goes around in a circle. So it works pretty well. It's definitely decluttered the area a bit. I say it's a one-way loop, sorry. This is just a one-way road that cuts in in front of the lodge. This is actually a two-way road around it. So if people don't want to go to the lodge, they can go around, and that's totally fine. If people want to go through the lodge to do a little cheat and, you know, get there a little quicker up to the rental cabins, they're not allowed. You're not allowed to turn right as you come out of here. So that was another way to prevent people from, uh, clogging up this road effectively. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm very happy with how it's all come together. Something I, the very last thing I want to touch on, this will feed into the pedestrian area later. You'll see the flickering of the parking spaces, right? And that's just going to keep happening. I think with the mod Bob, I can remove those lines, which I'll probably do. Uh, because when we're building out this pedestrian area, what's going to be happening as well is all these houses, even though they have no access to cars, are going to have parking lots on their like built into them and that's gonna look a bit weird so hopefully we can just hide the at the very least just hide the look of the spaces and then we don't have to worry about it uh, very lastly the rental cabins that continue up here just add a little bit more detail put a little entrance gate at the end of the road itself I've allowed for parking up here I think it's totally fine got some infographics and some maps and things as people are walking the trail all the way up and around and like I said we're using the decorated trail so we have those nice lights that kind of facilitate the, the whole walk all the way up and then a nice little fence now to kind of prevent you from falling off the edge of the cliff. So I just thought, you know, just point out a little bit of the details being added. Uh, but until the place levels up, not really going to do any more with it now, so we'll leave it. All right, so to the main focus, the pedestrian area. So let's get started. We're going to open up our district tool, select pedestrian area and get painting. Now the pedestrian area, as far as I know, 
by default, doesn't allow cars to come into it. And it's a unique thing. It comes with a DLC, right? It's the pedestrian DLC. I think it's called that. I could be wrong, actually. But either way, the important thing is that we need to give them a service point, right? It, how can your buildings get their facilities and their needs met, their cargo delivered, if cars can't come in? Well, you build a service point. So we'll click Cherry Park. Service point required. The size is 4,000 cells. It is quite big, actually, I must admit. This is going to be a really big one. Um, but I'm happy to see how this all shakes out. I haven't done any grand plan with this. I just kind of generally know what I want to do. And there's actually a bunch of things I need to do with even this. Noticing that so many people come in. In fact, maybe we should do this first. We should do this first. So effectively, what I'm going to be doing right now is moving the train station back just a little bit to give itself a little driveway. The reason I want a driveway is to facilitate the cars that are going to come out of the train station when new tourists and various other people arrive. What happens is they arrive, a bunch of cars spawn, and then they all clog up your traffic. But it took me a few different attempts to get this right, so I decided to time lapse it. So at the time when I'm recording it, I didn't think that. I was actually talking through everything, and you might hear me be a little bit um, redundant or repetitive. I'm going to probably say a few of these things a little later anyway. But effectively, what ended up happening was I decided to move it over further to the right and further back when I realized that the roads, the junctions, were all too bunched up on each other. So there, I'm just clearing it, and I'm realizing, yeah, this needs more time, right? So, gotta do it again. Move it out further, move it further back, gotta adjust all the rails. So it turned out to just be this, like, bigger job than I'd initially anticipated. Um, but, we'll get to it, but I'm very happy with the result overall. So effectively, on the side, now we're keeping it further in from the road, so that when we create this little one-way loop, this driveway, as it were, uh, we kind of get to separate it out from the other junctions that are a little bit too close. Now what I'll end up doing as well, it is a one-way road, so I'll get rid of those road crossings just to make it as smooth of a road as possible. It's really just a turn in for people going into the train station, a turn out for those who aren't, uh, who are coming out I guess. And then moving the car parks to kind of fill the gaps that we've just created. So we had car parks over on the right side. I decided oh, it makes more sense now to put, fill that kind of space in between. And maybe we'll have some shops actually further beyond the pathway to my left now as well. Or just ahead of me. Um, so that's probably something we're going to do in the future. But for now, the car parks are totally fine while we're building out that pedestrian area. And those car parks got removed from where the intercity bus station was. Seeing as everything had to move, I decided, well, it's time that we actually build in that cargo terminal that I've mentioned a long time ago. And it was actually a suggestion from someone in the comments as well that if you want to cut down on traffic, you could have a cargo terminal deep in the heart of your city. It seemed to make sense to obviously have it next to the train station here. So just one extra line is going to split off on the edge. And then we'll have a cargo terminal that effectively means that trains just deliver the cargo and the cars spawn from there in the heart of your city already and then fan out to wherever they need to go. So heavily cuts down on traffic, but it does mean that this area is going to have a lot of traffic. So in building it and thinking this through, or trying to think it through anyway as best as I can, when we built this little driveway in front of the train station, it needed a side road to go up to the intercity bus station. So you know that this place is going to be rammed with people, tourists, new people arriving, all these vehicles are going to spawn here and come out. But I wanted to extend that road on the right further, further, further back to where that cargo terminal is going to go, and then give them another outlet on the side to kind of filter just the cargo vehicles out. So. This is turning into a sort of services area. So here, we're building out that extra railway. So I knew that I just needed to add one on to the edge. So just added like a, what is it, a sixth line? A seventh line, wow. So we're adding on a seventh line here at the very end. And the cargo terminal, I was just trying to get the position right here. So placing it next to the road, lining it up then, obviously with the rails, and then connecting it and hooking it up. And it should just know what it needs in terms of proximity to generate the kind of commercial vehicles and the cargo vehicles to go to their various stores and uh, industry or whatever else they need to get to. So here I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. I thought maybe we could shape the road around, but ultimately I end up kind of changing my mind here. I guess we'll get to that in just a moment. But we have the, when I said that this is kind of a services area, you know, we've got an intercity bus station. We have the tram station, which I decided to keep here as well, uh, because it's all very, they generate all, ver all of them, excuse me, generate a lot of noise. So it seemed to make sense to keep all of these heavy noise things just close together, just kind of isolate them off on their own, cover them with trees where we can just to help pad out that, no dampen the noise as best as possible. Um, but I decided to go, you know, whole hog with it and add in the fire helicopter depot, the medical helicopter depot, and then I was also asked to add in the park maintenance 
building as well, which I never really thought about adding. I don't know why. I've seen it before, just never really considered it. So he's thrown that in there at the back as well, or I'll get to it in just one sec. So the point is that this area has turned into a, a services area. You know, it's, it's kind of like where a lot of vehicles come from. Hopefully they have a good connections to kind of find out whatever they want. And then it's also just a good place for services to kind of keep their noise um, isolated from the rest of the city. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that took a lot longer than expected, but I felt like if I was going to move that station back, it had a knock-on effect to a lot of different things. I started rambling, and I was like, look, I just got to shut off the microphone, focus, and try to forward plan a bit. So I'm going to walk you through the changes to the area now. So effectively, like I said, railway station has been moved back a bit, about four grid spaces or something like that. And it's been moved, shifted over to the right quite significantly, as it used to basically brush up alongside the edge of this road. But it felt like I needed to give it more space. So effectively, we have the car park spaces in here in between the station and the road that's going to hopefully fill up as the place gets more and more busy with a little bit of tree line to kind of obfuscate the actual side on view of the railway station i was going to do that from the front but i kind of thought like no i think the front of the building is quite nice and you wouldn't want to cover up the fact that there's a big railway station there for people who are looking for it like tourists etc so nice big open plain view you can totally see it flower beds in the front seem to make the most sense then with a couple of trees just for to break things up a little bit. So then we have the road that's in front of it, which of course is now a one-way road. And I'm watching a camper van just do an absolutely illegal maneuver to get into that car park spot there, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, being a one-way road means that cars are now hopefully gonna filter in, drop off people or whatever, and then filter back out. The real reason it's there, of course, is because when a tourism train comes in, an intercity train dropping off people who are arriving to the city for the first time, what tends to happen, especially if they're actually not tourists, but they're just moving in for the first time, is all these cars will generate and just clog up the road with tons of traffic, which is fine for now because we don't have anything on this road really to the side. But in future, we will. So anticipating that problem, it's like, well, if they've got their own road now further in, this is the one that's going to get busy and clogged up just momentarily while cars are basically being pulled out of people's asses and then driving and merging onto the main kind of street. So hopefully that kind of will resolve some of the issues that I'm anticipating getting. Uh, the other one is then the road to the right. So the right now is going to take you to the intercity bus terminal. So people are arriving from there as well. If they want to come into the city, uh, a bus will have to turn in here, hit that right lane and then merge over. If you're in the left lane, you have to go around this way. If you're in the right lane, that's totally fine. There's like uh, stoplights now on top of the crossing so that when people are coming out, they can just cross right over. And that's because I'm anticipating a lot larger volume of traffic, which is just after seeing now for the first time, I've just let time play. That is a cargo terminal now on the end of our station. So now freight trains can deliver cargo in here and that's gonna be commercial goods, which I actually just thought of something. This is stop isn't really necessary here but it's not a no harm in having it because i've actually told those cars any commerce vehicles or trucks have to go this way along the industrial road they're not allowed to use that kind of pedestrian road because it'll just be clogging up this area clogging up the one-way street instead they're gonna have to find their own way to filter around um, i'm anticipating that this will come out further because i don't want these junctions so close on top of each other all the time but that's at least the plan the plan is to kind of bring in the uh, freight, I guess you could say, the cargo, the commerce, in a different way, and then filter it onto the road instead of clogging up what's in front of the rail station as well. So we'll see how this all shakes out. It's going to make this junction quite busy still, I think, because there's not really many alternatives to it, but we'll see how it all shakes out. So that's how it's working. And then just obviously at the back, we have a fire helicopter depot, a medical he helicopter depot, and then a park maintenance building. I might switch this out actually for a police helicopter depot just to keep the consistency with the three of them it's almost like a helicopter yard for all three uh, maybe move this somewhere else but it was nice to see that the all 10 vehicles just rolled out immediately as soon as they put it down so they're going to boost our park's value i guess and the entertainment value and how many visitors they're going to get so this should be all fine uh gonna have to obviously put some traffic lights on this if it's not there already no it is there it's just i'll probably have to make them timed so i can control it but other than that, I think we can finally get started on the actual pedestrian area now, which I've named cleverly pedestrian area. So a service point is going to be required. Effectively, for any of these, anything that's going to be in here, like com commercial buildings, residential buildings, whatever, you know, they're not going to have access to the road. They're only going to be able to walk. So how do you deliver goods to a shop? Well, you need a service point. So let's take a look. So in our parks thing, we have this, the pedestrian area. Here's our service point. Now, this is something I'm still learning, still working out. 
because I'm not too sure where these should really go. You can have just one, but I think we're going to have multiple. This is a very large area, and if I was to pile them here, you know, which is close by the freight terminal, the cargo terminal, it would be a lot of traffic on that junction, so I don't know. I'm not really too sure. As the cars are... Unfortunately, this is going to be on the inside, so I suppose somewhere... Maybe like here. Along here would be good. Did it just create its own thing? It did for some reason. That's okay. We'll just do this. So I'm going to put down three, because I think we're going to need them. Let's just get rid of that district that was created by accident there. So let's just say, don't need that one. And I'll just paint this one back further out. So, like I said, at this point, I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I think having three of these here at the end means that cargo vehicles that will be coming along will just jump in and jump out of there without disturbing the traffic too much, perhaps. That being said, I was planning on having residences here. Yeah, maybe I'll just move it up a bit further. Sorry, I'll move it somewhere a bit further up this way. And we can always adjust it in the future. And as our pedestrian area grows, we're going to get access to different types of this building anyway, so it's not necessarily a permanent thing. All right, so they've got water. They won't have power initially, so we'll just drag this out. All right, and we'll see how that treats us, okay? So now they have up to five trucks available for cargo and three for garbage. Uh, in my preliminary tests, I noticed that this garbage never fills up, so I don't really know what's the deal with that because to get further in, you need to actually provide a certain amount of garbage trucks, so we'll see how that all goes. Anyways, let's just begin with a small pedestrian sandstone street. We'll just start with that. I'm going to basically continue the residential district further and further over, and then on the left side, we're going to put down a stadium and maybe the expo center center as well. Excuse me. All right, so... I reckon just about there, and we'll just come all the way down with that. And I'm really just winging this for the moment, but we'll see how this goes. I might cut some of these entrances onto the side road there in a moment. Got helicopters all over the place now. Yeah, so obviously it's super grid-like. That's totally fine though for now. Let's just decide where these are probably the best fit to have. So, join on a crossing from there. I think that would be totally fine. Coming in from here would be probably good as well, if you can merge onto that. No, um, hmm. Uh, yeah, actually, that's fine. And we'll just brush it right up to the edge, and people can just walk. You don't have to actually connect the nodes, right? Why would I have to do that? Only if you wanted city service vehicles to be able to reach in from here. But I don't necessarily want that. How's the zoning with that? That's totally fine. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'd say then continue this across. Link it into there. Don't want to link that one. It's too close to maybe that junction. But this one could probably link in. And we can straighten that up in just one sec. So something like that. It's pretty straight. Okay. Right, so I know it's super basic or whatever. I'm trying to break it up to make it look a little bit more interesting, but I'm struggling, as you can tell. There's a crossing point there, so maybe we could have this continue on up. How about don't node snap for just a second? There we go. And that way you can kind of cross straight into a pedestrian street right here. And I might change some of these to have some grass and trees and things on them. Now we want a bigger one as we're coming up to the... What's it called? The um, stadium that's going to have a big kind of main street. Now we'll just use the blank tiles for now, and we can change how it looks in the future. So let's say maybe across from here. I guess I'll have to check how big that stadium is, actually. So this is the building I want to use. I don't want to rub it up right against the sides of the road, but I'm just trying to gauge the general height of it. Height of it. Something like that. I'm probably down a bit further. Okay. I think I've got it. So we're going to be starting around where the P is in pedestrian. Now, why is that a problem? Why can't you just let me snap onto that? There you go. Yeah, it's not happy about that. I did use energy to make it do that, but uh seems to be some sort of struggle here with the nodes. Oh, that's because node snapping's off. There we go. Is that okay? Seems okay to me. So that's like the main street, or one off. 
This is where we're going to have like residences and then commerce and offices begin. So this will be like an office block here, office block here, maybe. Or at least this lane will be probably yeah, trying to decide which one makes more sense. Anyways, let's just continue and then we'll adjust as needs be. Going to do what we just did with the train station. Just bring this road up and then bring it down. Something like that. It might need to come out a bit further, actually, because I think that building was a little bit larger. Oh, no, it left actually pretty good space on either side, so that's nice. All right, just like that, our stadium is being placed, our football stadium. Now, we're going to color this to our what darn plays kind of blue. And then we've got come one, come all. To make it easier for fans to get to the stadium, public transport is free on match days. So our first match day is going to be the 2nd of March, 2054. So that's only three months, four months away. Well, uh, yeah, just less than about three months. Uh, what else do we have? Hire security staff to patrol the stadium. Crime keeps crime low. 500 per week per stadium. So it costs 4,000 per week to maintain this thing. Subsidized youth. So let's have a look. The capacity is 750 visitors. I don't think I can change that with the realistic population model. Just leave it as is. I'm just working this out. 4,000 times, what is it, 52 weeks in a year? 208,000 is how much this place costs us per year. Because we can only run one match per year, we need to basically make at least 208,000. I, I'll toggle on the free public transport to start with. To see how that goes. Mm, I don't know. Let's turn it off. We'll struggle the first time and that's fine. There is a metro line running underneath here. And this is actually... I was thinking that the metro could come right up here. In this spot in here. But maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe it should just be on this side somewhere and people float out. I'm not really too sure. Okay, well let's just... I, th I think it would make sense to come up in this way. You, you know, you come out here and you can kind of go wherever you want then. And it's on the inside of the stadium. I like the sound of that. The other building I wanted was the Expo Center, which I think is on Tier 5, is it? Yeah, we've got a Science Center and then an Expo Center. So again, similar sort of vibe to this building. Uh, maybe... How much space do we have with that one? So we've got at least five grid spaces of room to work with. So I'll tell you what. So like this. Oh man, not a fan of that. Although we can decal it, I guess, to hide it. Yeah, so it's bigger on this side. I don't know if that's a bad look or not. It kind of is, right? The It's not symmet symmetrical. But it does... We are pushing all the way out to the edge of this, which is what I wanted. But probably don't want that. We maybe want a path to go behind that building. So, let's bring this up one. I think that's pretty much it, is it? Two spaces are in there now. There we go. Okay. And then we'll throw in the expo center across from the stadium. Ah, interesting. It's uneven in terms of size. What other buildings do we have? A science center. I don't think across from the stadium, the jocks will be beating up the nerds. So let's uh, keep them safe. Damn, that's a shame that it's uneven. What else do we have? The aquarium. Again, per nerds, would get beaten up, but that's how it would look. It's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, maybe actually we'll leave that. That's kind of nice. And then maybe we can still throw in that expo center to the side. Have a path that cuts through to the both of them. Yeah. Alright, so I'm just going to move this really quickly. And grab this. And we'll just continue this out further. I'm not sure where it needs to cut in just yet, but we'll do this. And the little path can go all the way through, all the way out to the back. But it's just going to be a side path. Okay, so now we know the width of the building. We can just grab it like this, maybe to there, and bring it down. Okay, so somewhere here, that metro station, I'm hoping... Oh yeah, it seems good. Can just pop right up. Sorry to the guys that are literally mid-journey right now. But this is what I was thinking would work here. So if we flip it... It's attaching to the big street. I want to attach to the small street. Can I do that? I mean, it makes more sense to go to the big street, I guess. Because then they can go wherever they want. Alright, let's try that. And then we can just merge these. I'll blend this a bit better in future. But for now, we'll just connect it haphazardly. Like so. 
All right. Now, in here, we'll grab our stations again. Now, we'll just add this in as a new stop for the line. Is that both of them, or is that just one? Uh, hard to tell. I think that's both. I'm sure the graphic will correct itself once they make their way around, I'm guessing. Okay, so, metro line right there, looking good. Let's go with a path that people can walk either side of it, because what will happen is they'll come out this way and then they'll do a loop around, it'll be a bit silly. So we want that to come all the way back up and just connect it just like this. And we'll put some trees and flower beds and things around these, which will make them look a bit nicer too. Yeah. All right, that's what we got so far. So big, big leisure expo center type things. Obviously, it's all blank. We, this will be filled in and we'll work on the ground textures that are underneath these. The thing that bothers me with this is that we have car park spaces and this is a pedestrian only area so there will never be used so I'm, one of, I'm probably going to download that mod that lets me go into an individual building asset and remove those just so I can clear it out to because visually they're not going to fill up anyway all right so we've got a lot of, still a lot of room to play with I'm going to move continue to move this over just behind the station or the uh, stadium actually and then we've got a lot more room here for extra offices and stuff like that uh, in fact, if we're going to have offices and... Oh yeah, these are the offices, sorry. Commerce is what I meant to say. So we'll make this attached to the grid. So the main street kind of grows there. I'm going to now start separating some of these junctions because they're a little too close to each other. But also, get rid of the zoning that's on this one. You're not needed. Don't know why we have that effect, but that just seems to happen sometimes. Let's try this again, but bring it just down to the edge. There we go, that's better. Much better. All right, so get rid of all that zoning, not needed. And then similarly, you can probably cut this one and this one, right? And then we can always just manually like bring it right up to the edge so people can at least walk between the two areas. I think that works, pretty sure anyway, when it does that kind of joining graphic. Pretty sure I've seen people walk from the path onto these things. Not necessarily this, I've done it with roads, so I've never tried it with the pedestrian crossings. Alright, so that's what we got for shape. Pretty much. Uh, we could try to make it again a bit more nuanced in certain places. Perhaps we come in like this, and we come down, join on there, something like that. Okay, so what we need now is this pedestrian area's district, it's policies, no, sorry, we need its own, it actually has to have a separate district, does it? I guess so. I assume so anyway. So let's just grab out to here, brand new district for all of these guys. Maple Square. Now we're going to give this a policy. I would say free public transport within here. Oh yeah, something I didn't even think of. Maybe that could have been a tram road. Or it still could be. The tram could cut in this way. And then either take a right or left turn getting back onto the tram road. But that would drop people right outside. Which would be pretty good, right? Should we try that? It's a bit messy having a tram come through. There is a metro. Kind of undecided. Let's just see what it looks like really quickly then. There's the small tram road as well, which you could have as a guidance out. So you could even go all the way up to here and get out. Don't want it next to the people's houses. But next to the commerce and stuff is totally fine. So what is this one? This is large sandstone pedestrian street with trolleybus wires. And that's the bus only version. And that's the tram version. So I'll just upgrade one segment just to see. Yeah, I just think it's ugly, so going to have to say no, unfortunately. Yeah, I'd rather something like this. This looks much better. So have that nice greenery in the middle. 
I would then say greenery on the sides on this bit and on this bit. It's kind of cool. Uh, then again in the middle. Yeah, I'm down with that. Okay, so now for our side streets. Let's see. So this is the residential area. So I feel like the residential area should have trees along the sides. Something like that. And then we can break it up with the potted plants on the going the opposite direction. Just to have a bit of variety. Then we get to what's basically... Well, it still kind of is residence. Oh, no, it's office at that point. Yeah, so it's office from here and then commerce. Okay. So, I think this makes more sense for commerce, these things. Let's try that. All right, so let's get paving. Or, um... I would say paving zoning. We're going to do some policies there really quickly. So district-wise, our commercial specialization, I feel like, should be for tourism. So all the commerce buildings will be geared for tourists. It causes noise pollution, but attracts tourists. Right, and then we have offices. IT cluster, no, it's way too big. Office wall-to-wall, -wall, nope. Financial, nope. We're just going to leave it then. That can be okay on its own. Self-sufficient buildings. Consumes less garbage, electricity... And generates less tax income. Sorry, generates less garbage. Obviously, it doesn't consume garbage. We'll pop that in. Self-sufficient building. See what we get. All right. Let's go with the high, high density. All here. Then we want offices. Then we went high density commercial. Let's not get too crazy with it. But uh, yeah, something like that, basically. Get some shops and stuff in there. So we can do that just to see. Give ourselves some options. Okay. Is that it then? That's it. That's the plan. Maple Square. It's not really a square. Also, just thinking about it, we're going to get items and things for our pedestrian area as it levels up that will change. Yeah, I'll be able to put some buildings down. So I think in this area particularly, probably get rid of that zoning because this could have, we can have a bunch of different little buildings in there and there's also landmark buildings that can be slammed in as well into certain places. So I don't know how big they're going to be until we get them. So I'll just leave it. And if we have to destroy buildings, we have to destroy them. Big, no big deal. All right. So um, let's just let time play. We'll see how the metro gets along because I'm a little bit iffy about that. It seemed a bit messy, but hopefully if they just make a loop around it, things will be okay. They're also going to need water and electricity. So let's bring the water pipe down here. How is water actually? It's very low. Might have to add in a new one. This is actually sucking up so much water that they'll probably all have to move in a moment. All right, I just want to line it up with its little buddies here. Sink it down a little bit into the ground. I think that's good enough, right? Pretty good. And then it just needs to attach. But these are all good. You can actually see, look at it. It can barely get that water. So yeah, we'll have to just move these deeper in. That's all right. No big deal. Still connected to everything. Sucking the river dry. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> How we doing? Oh my God, these are tall buildings. These are tourist buildings. Commercial tourism, only one level to them. Holy crap, they're way too big. Jeez, I didn't expect that. I thought they... Let's uh, dezone this area at least. We'll do something with that in the future. But yeah. All right, it's growing in. So we have our expo center. Do we have any visitors yet? So the match is on the 2nd of March. Uh, so I think about two months before or something that people will start arriving. And hopefully they can reach it okay and everything. They should, I think, be coming in via intercity trains that arrive at the uh, terminal here. And they could just get the metro right around. I wish I could create a line that goes from here to there and just says 
it's free for the first stop. You know, I don't want a public transport being free everywhere on match day. But just from there to there, yeah, I'm down for that. And how's our service points doing? Cargo trucks will start getting used. Yeah, there we go, we can see people pulling in now. Interesting, he came from the other side of the road, actually. I didn't think they'd cross over like that. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if it needs it, but we can move this a bit closer. Guess it doesn't need it. Yeah, the electricity's growing over anyway, so that's fine. Cool. A lot of offices popping in. I don't know how we're going to sustain all that. But like I said, as the pedestrian area grows, we'll get different buildings that I can put in for entertainment and stuff. In fact, this place doesn't have any parks. There's a lot it doesn't have. Uh, education. Jeez. Yeah, we don't even have any schools or anything for these guys. And schools are getting a little low on students. Uh, but I think, yeah, another high capacity elementary school is probably good for this area based on how it looks. Uh, so this is residential, residential, and then this is going to be offices. So we're going to destroy some of those offices straight away. And maybe should be on the outskirts like this. Would that make more sense? I feel like it would. Yeah, I don't know actually. Maybe on the side. Not sold on it, you know? It's a bit strange. I don't know. I've never played with this DLC before, obviously. So I'm just totally winging it. Um, I'm after making what I'm not very impressed by, which is a lot of grids. But I feel like if you have curvy pedestrian roads, the zoning would be really strange. So, I don't know. Could be nice, though. I'll get better. <laughs> I know people probably don't care at all, but... I'm very self-critical. I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I could do more with this. But I'm most intrigued to see how we get all these people in for the match day and stuff, to be honest. The aquarium, the expo center, all that. It's a nice big leisure area, so... I recently visited the O2 Arena, I think it was called, in London, and it's all just like, there is cars around it actually, but it's mostly just a large open area where people can walk around. And there's all these different things. There is like a big science center, uh, then there's like all these stadium, not stadiums, but uh, theaters, excuse me, inside this sort of large expo center. So it's like a big expo center. There's concerts that go on inside, you know, there's theaters for different things. There's multiple events going on. It's not just one thing. So that's what I was trying to kind of emulate that. It's like, okay, how can we have a big area that's like dedicated to multiple different places? Um, and then like people also live in that kind of pedestrian area as well that are, that are nearby to it. That's what I'm going for anyway. But it is a big ask for this whole place to be supplied by these guys. <laughs> Let's see how we're getting on. So for unlocks, there we go, that's what I was meaning to look into. So have five cargo trucks being used, and then you get your various different service points and garbage. Have a flower plaza. So the land value has to grow a certain amount. So a flower plaza is something we've got. A residential zone landmark. Have 2,000 residents living in residential buildings on pedestrian streets. Wow, we did it already? Yeah, maybe. Commercial zone. In a pedestrian area with a commercial area focus, have 20,000 goods sold per week. So we have to wait for a week to at least go by for that. Museum of Modern Art, have tourists arriving into here. Yeah, I'm expecting all that to be fine. It is interesting how there's like a crossing here, I guess. Just for people to walk, yeah. Cool. Alright, well I'm not I'm not totally hating it. Let's get these guys back in. How's your zoning? Yours was fine, but you just didn't want to make use of it. Okay. Or it's making use of it out facing out this way, I guess. Oh, that's a nice building. Commercial tourism building. 29 jobs available, yeah. There's going to be a lot of jobs with all this, I guess. 3% unemployment. I'm imagining... Well, I guess it's a lot of people moving in at the same time. So, if we have a look at our coverage of certain facilities. So, healthcare. Totally fine. Big hospital right here. Madison is covered. And Maple Square is basically covered by proxy. Death care. Death care is going to get really full actually quite soon. I'm just going to, because I'm lazy, temporarily just place down a couple more of the crematoriums. If I can find it. There it is. Let's be placed on roadsides. Oh, because I got rid of the zoning. God, that, that's such an annoying thing. Yeah, I'm just going to be really lazy with it for a minute. This isn't going to stay here, obviously, but we need more help. So, uh, <laughs> popping those down. Okay. Child care. Yeah, you could have a child health care center, I guess, in here. Again, I don't mind removing the office space for that kind of stuff. Child Healthcare Center. 
nearby the uh, the school. So what we'll do is we'll just dezone some of the offices from this street because obviously we're taking it up with our elementary school and a few other buildings. So we've removed it, partially removed some of the zoning there, so that's going to redevelop. But it's a nice break of the noise pollution between the two areas, I think. Now, does it need a high school as well? Don't know. A high school out here is pretty much at capacity. Yeah, I guess so then. Or certainly we'll need one like over here in the future, yeah. So maybe I'll just leave it for now. Because I've been trying to prevent... I want people to come out of Ellen Ridge School and not necessarily... Some people to come out of high school, but then I'll, I'm trying to lower the amount of people going to university. It's been struggling with that number. So what's the time? It's uh, it's just after Christmas. It's um, Boxing Day. No visitors here yet. Maybe in the new year. Hopefully it is connected correctly. I was a bit worried that it might not be. Having more audience increases the odds for the team to win. Make sure you've got good road connections. So I have built it onto a pedestrian street. Hopefully that's okay. I don't know. Maybe nobody can reach it unless they get by car. Hey, look at the flood of people. There we go. We've got people coming in now. Yeah, they're walking straight in. Visit First visitor. Hey, we did it. Have, where have these come from, by the way? <laughs> did they walk across the street from the station? Oh, yeah. Looks like they've just come across that way. That's totally fine. They've got a red light or a light there to do so. I'd prefer that they take the metro, but obviously it's exp it costs you money. You can just walk across. Yeah, we've got people coming in now. And this sounds like it's getting used. So two different things should be pulling up here. I just want to make sure that it is connected. Oh my god, lost track of it immediately. Let's go underground. See, is this still connected? No. Now it is. Cool. It was only getting one from one direction. Now it's got both directions. So coming out of here, it's only one stop to get over there now. So that should be good. We should see a lot of people using it, I think, in future then. Wow, yeah, look at all the people. That's great. So obviously a lot of this is blank, right? Just bear with me. It'll get filled in and look a little bit nicer as time goes on. I can't get over how big these buildings are, though. I thought tourism buildings would be tiny little things, like gift shops and stuff. They're like massive high-rises. And they're, they've only got one level, so there's nothing I can even do about it. And then all of our co commerce is going to go, like, abandoned because there's not going to be enough people, at least for a while. Although I wonder... Based on workers. Oh, yeah, not visitors. Hmm. Actually, commerce is filling up. Okay, sorry, it's the offices that aren't. Which is understandable as well. We did just put a lot of them down. Got room for more people. So these are the self-sufficient buildings, by the way. Congratulations. A hey, Redwood Reserve has reached level 2 finally. So tent camping site, viewing deck, and viewing deck 2. So I'll look into that a little bit in the future. But that's just telling us that this place is leveling up. It's quite busy as well. A lot of cars up here. I saw people lamenting the fact that we have to use offices, but we do. 10 out of 15 business. We're just on the... I need... This place needs to be at 81% uh, or 80% popularity in order to keep my average high enough. So it's got to have them, really. I could maybe get rid of one at this rate, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it needs it. But it does mean that the area is busy as a result. How many people are on those buses coming up here? 15? What about leaving? 20, 23? And what about waiting on the entrance? Yeah, not that many. All right, cool. God, this place is filling out fast. What are we up to now? 57,000. So, interestingly... When we get to 60,000, we're going to unlock an airport, cargo airport, and so on. Unfortunately, I've been testing this out because people did ask about airports. There, I seem to have bugged out my game or bugged out the map or done something wrong. If you look in the air, apart from that helicopter, look up to the sky, I guess. It's also a cloudy day at the moment. There's no planes. And I've been going through the previous saves. I went all the way back to episode 5. Every save I've done has like uh, the episode number, right? So I can go all the way back. And there's some of my older saves from before I was doing the series are in there as well. Anyway, I know, I was like, does this map ever have it? Because it does say it has air connections. In fact, there's like a little airfield out here and everything. And when you check the transport, you go like this, is it the flight path? There we go. We can see there's flight path, right? There's a flight path that goes through here. And there's another one on the other side of the map as well, uh, slightly out of my bounds just over that way. So if you kind of look up, 
you should see every now and then just planes that go through your area. You know the way trains just sometimes go through? Just those generic sort of ones. I call them the NPCs, right? They're not really a, for me. They're just kind of doing their thing going through. Now, it's a cloudy day, so it's not the best example, but trust me, I did a lot of testing. I spent maybe three hours just sitting there looking at the sky, time-lapsing it, and recording it as well in case I missed anything. Oh, by the way, we're getting people covered in now. Damn. Yeah. Well, it's a combination of things. It's going to be people coming in for the match day. It's going to be people coming in to move in. And then also, you can see a bunch of fresh factory things coming in to make deliveries for the first time. So it's going to clog up things quite a bit, actually, at first. Anyway, long story short, it seems like no matter what I do, I can't get planes to arrive in this game anymore. Because something I did between episode 5 and 6, and I can't work out what that is, stopped planes flying in this map. So I tested. I built an airport out here, which is really close to the flight path. I unlocked all the tiles. I tried building my own flight path. Um, what else? I tried turning off the intercity bus station and the intercity rail, so it's like, oh, people have to be forced to use that. Tried cutting off my own highway to see if they just come in that way. Tried cutting off the cargo terminals. N neither the cargo or the regular airport is working, so if anyone thinks they know what I might have done to the map to do that, because I was looking at episode 5, and I was like, oh, did I expand the tiles? Is it is it the 81 tiles mod, for instance? I was like, I, no, I didn't actually do that. Nothing changed between 5 and 6 that I can see, in terms of the tiles at least, that would prevent planes flying for some reason. But something something happened, and it looks like if that's going to be the case, we may never get... I don't know what's going on here. We may never get planes in this save, which would be, which would be a shame. You know, I was looking forward to building out the airport DLC thing. So you can see all these people just arrived. They're from the intercity... Uh, travel as well and then it's our regular travel that's coming in here train line one intercity is right behind us i mean you've got three five other platforms you could have used dude but he's like no i'm just gonna wait for this one to clear up 300 people coming in hot love to see it in some ways you know maybe we should have that public transport on for free actually considering we're block blocking traffic here quite a bit how bad is it yeah, it's pretty bad it's not that bad anywhere else but it's just there yeah What are your rules here? Let me check out the uh, lane connections. Oh, you don't have any. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll make life a little easier for you, somewhat. If you're in these lanes, you're going straight forward. Yeah. Well, this one doesn't really matter. I'll just leave that blank. It's a bus lane. This might clear some things a little bit once the tram moves, yeah. There we go. That's better. A little bit. It's obviously going to stop with the lights, and that's fine, but... I think it's smoothened out just a little bit. Yeah, I need to put a time traffic line. Just be like, trams have the right of way, they go first, everyone else goes after them. That'll probably clear things up quite significantly. Not too bad. I'm sure, we'll, I'm sure it'll all filter out. So, how long... We've got a month to go till match day. 2nd of March. It's now the 5th of February. We filled up 687, so we could have upped our tickets a little bit. Looks like we're going to fill up completely this first time. Uh, if we check the pedestrian area, we can see that we now have a Museum of Postmodern Art, a pedestrian street market hall. So again, let's have a look at some of these things. Uh, I'll just use the regular thing. Let's just type market hall. That's the fish farm. This one, right? Pedestrian street market hall. So this goes across buildings. Does it? Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, it connects in the, this way. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, just for fun. Let's just do it this way. Why not? So, sort of market hall building. You go in, you get some food, maybe. You go buy some small things. Nice. Let's see what else we got access to. I'm, I'm a little confused where these buildings are. Oh, the, are they in here? Oh, we have the bigger cargo service points now as well. And then we have the small garbage service points. Is it in unique buildings, perhaps? Yeah, I'm not too sure where it is. Like the... The things that we're just unlocking, for instance. Like the Museum of Postmodern Art. Like, where the hell is that? Uh, I'll just search it, though. Post... There we go. It's actually not that big. Could maybe put it in on the side here. Or even somewhere here, actually. Always move it. Just want to see the building, really. I'm eager. 
Oh my god. Oh hey, they're wearing our uni our uh, jerseys. Oh dude, that's a really nice touch. That's so cool. Everyone's wearing blue. And the stadium's all lit up blue. That's a pretty cool touch. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Nice. The, yeah, the, we can see lots of cargo trucks are being used. Yeah, I won't keep this building here, but I like the look of it. It seems like it would be a good fit actually on the edge here, maybe. If we destroy those ones, I don't care about them. <laughs> These guys are happy because they're like, we survived. All right, a little tourism building on the side of it there. Totally ruining the vibe of the postmodern art building. All right, cool. And again, we need a little pathway to cut through these two areas, maybe. Uh, okay, what else did we unlock? We have the Sunken Plaza Shopping Mall. The Sunken Plaza Shopping Mall. Oh, wow. She big. Hmm. Yeah, that's a big one. Let's just pop it out here. I want to see what it looks like. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Has the game started? No, nope, not yet. I can hear the crowd are getting ready, though. Well, there's actually nobody in there, but I heard some cheering and stuff. We're almost at full capacity. That's great. And the city hasn't completely ground to a halt. It's not too bad. Not too bad. It's expected that you're going to have some traffic problems on a day like today. So would this fit somewhere better up here? Yeah, I don't know. I'm really going to have to play around with these buildings now that we've unlocked them to see where they can go. This seems like it would be perfect here. But it's too big for the other one that we just placed in. Big zone of influence on this one. Not too bad for the noise, actually. So it would be probably good in a commercial zone like here. Let's turn off that. It's still too big even for that area. Damn. Yeah, I'll have to think about it. All right, let's just quickly check. What else did we get? The residential zone landmark and the flower plaza. Yeah, let's try those. Why not? So I'll type flower plaza. There it is. That one's only small. It is but a baby. In fact, let's put it in the school. And I already forgot. Oh, um, residential zone landmark. There we go. And that's got actually quite a lot of noise pollution, interestingly. So you don't want it too close to those houses. What is this supposed to be? People live here. <laughs> it's weird that it creates so much noise pollution then, because it's like, well, I don't want to put it near people's houses then, because that would suck. All right, so we've got some abandoned buildings. Let's just stick it somewhere here then. Knock those ones for now. Let fresh ones grow in their place. See, these are perfect. This is what I was expecting. Tourism buildings, yes. Kind of like little coffee places. You know, um, she just walked down from a balcony. Uh, selling merch or whatever the case might be. That sort of thing. God, this place really filled out fast. Wow. Looks decent. Need to cover up some areas with trees. Definitely room for more services in there. How close are we now? We're only like a week away. We'll keep it on times two speed. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how much money it generates this by the end and who wins or who loses. What does this one say? Subsidized use. By spending money on training young players, the team has increased the odds to win. Applies to all stadiums. Costs 9,000 per week. Multiplied by the number of stadiums in the city. 9,000 a week is way too much money. Our new cargo terminal seems to be doing well as a way to bring in things from behind. And then we have our new filter system that just takes a lot of... Look at all the buses coming in. Holy crap. 23, 60 out of 60, 60 out of 60, 60 out of 60, and another 60 here. All coming in hot. A lot of tourists flocking to the city. And also, I guess, just new people moving in as well. We're closing in on that 60,000. Yeah, it's unus unusually busy, I would say. Because I actually think this is working pretty well, but it's just unusually busy because of the match day. And that's going to happen once a year, I believe. Yeah, you can see they're all wearing our uniforms. It's so cool that they're all wearing blue. You can immediately tell who they are. A lot of them coming in via the uh, bus, as well as the train. 
I'm taking my new little pathway to get across. Has the game begun? Hey, it's the it's match day. It's the 4th of March. So, obviously the way time works in the game is not super realistic. We're going to have this play on for a month, I believe. And then we get to see who wins. So we'll wrap up the episode when, when we see who wins. Place your bets now. 50-50 chance, really, right? Swords FC versus Springdale. Nice, we can see people using our... Oh, what's this? Oh, it's a fire truck. All oh, right. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'll allow it. Okay, yeah. Something... While that game is going on, I did want to check. So, let's have a look at the land value. Super high in this area. They are as... It's as expensive as it can be in here. They're absolutely loving it. Parks and leisure. So, unique buildings. So, they all have access to these amazing unique buildings really nearby. Parks and plazas. They've got a couple. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're all fully blue. They're, they're loving it as well. Super high coverage for them. Park areas. This can, t can kind of, I guess, sort of counts as a pedestrian area slash park. No public library for them. Sports arenas. No sports arena either. Yeah, it kind of seems like it'd be cool to have a sports arena or a gym or something there. But maybe we'll wait and see how this place grows. Cargo service point. Yeah, let's add in a bigger one. It's interesting that it seems like you can separate them. I didn't know that. Between pedestrian area service point. Distributes goods and collects garbage from buildings on pedestrian streets. It has limited capacity. And then we've got cargo. So there's two different ones. So let's get rid of these guys. That was 5, 10, 15 trucks in total. So it can't be placed on a pedestrian road. It has to be placed on a regular road, which makes sense. And then a large pedestrian service point. This would almost make more sense down closer to the pedestrian area, obviously. Huge noise, noise pollution, though. Holy crap. What are you doing to me? <laughs> yeah. Or you could just have multiple small ones on the sides, I guess. Hmm. Just trying to think where it should go. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Killing some of the commercial opportunities here, but I don't mind. <laughs> Says they're cut off at the moment, but they shouldn't be, though, right? Once they... Yeah, that's okay now. Let's just uh, knock these buildings, because they've grown really small, because they've zoned incorrectly. It's my bad. There we go. Oh, yeah, I just realized this recently. Check this out. I have no idea this was even in the game. Our population. So we started in 2023, it's now 2054, so 30 odd years, and in 30 years we've gone up to 60,000. Big spike now, over the last couple of years, as we're just expanding, 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 higher and higher densities. Uh, there's loads of other statistics in there, so if anyone wants to see anything, just let me know. But the birth rate versus death rate is kind of interesting too. Obviously a huge spike for birth rates now, I guess, even though, I don't know if it counts as birthing people if you're just bringing them in. But I suppose adults move in, they might probably have kids like immediately when they get their new place. Uh, taxation, the city value is climbing, climbing, climbing. The city treasury, we're just super rich. Imports versus exports, pretty cool. Love all that stuff. I had no idea that was that was in the game. All right, so we're not even halfway through the month yet. I'll leave time playing on triple speed. The stands are full. Did we hit the whole thing? 7.42 out of 7.50. So maybe with some of our congestion, if it was eased a little bit, they would have filled in. Not too sure. Uh, what can we do here? Can we change the look of this at all? Not sure, but I know that we could probably get a decal, right? And click sandstone. It's the same type as what's here. But it's a lot smaller. Oh yeah, they're real small for some reason. They almost match the scale of this one. Yeah, you'd almost want to do something like that and bring it all the way down, but I'll have to use the line tool to make it like more correct. So you can use the line tool, tell it to size itself based on its own spacing and do something like that. So if I click maybe right here, it actually overlaps a little bit. That's kind of cool. Something like that could work. Given a bit of time with it, I, I think we'll probably do that. Just to I'll cover up some of the gray mess. God, it's super loud in there. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's a bad idea putting too many attractions like that on top of each other, but to me it makes sense at least. Oh yeah, whoops. I totally forgot that this is still over here. Uh, probably just get rid of that building to be honest. We'll be, I'm definitely going to place it in there somewhere, but I just don't know where just yet. Um, might have a look at how I can expand some of the commercial area here and do it. Yeah. Alright, let's keep time moving. It's now the 1st of April. 2nd, 3rd, and it'll be over on the 4th round. We'll see who wins. Alright, one day to go. Is it over? Hey, happy faces! I know what that means. It means we won. Boom. And we made 210,210. Right? So I don't know what it means here, 30,000. So we won 180,000, but our total income. So, oh, I guess ticket sales. is. is all right. So you actually just win straight up money. And then we got from the ticket sales, we got 30,000. Interesting. Yeah, so I'm just breaking out the calculator here. 750 times 30 for each ticket should be 22,500. So I'm not really sure how we sold more because the it says that our ticket price is 30. We can only have 750, but apparently we made more than that. So great. Don't know how that's possible. Uh, the other thing then would be what was our costs? We said that it's 4,000 per week to run the place, and that was 52 weeks. So that's 208,000. Hey, total profit 2,000. <laughs> worth it but hey I mean, we brought people into the city there right that's probably did something for our economy i would have to imagine it's hard to it'd be too hard to look up the graph now and see because we also brought in fresh amounts of people now that they're all in then the next match game which is going to take place on the third uh, the 7th of march 2055 so another year away so on the 7th of march it'll be interesting to see now that like everyone's moved in that'll decongest the, the roads quite a bit it'll just be straight up people are here to see the, the game the sports ball and see how it all goes oh there's our park maintenance building nice driving to a sidewalk cafe all oh, right i didn't know they take care of those types of parks i thought it was only the big kind of the big ones it's probably like all the leisure buildings yeah i wonder how many people took the tram or if any or if anyone took the uh, metro here but it's nice to see it seems place seems busy lots of people walking around visiting our various different buildings and stuff. It's all cool. It just needs some decoration, I think. And some better path, path work and stuff like that. In fact, let's just put one of them in now. I'm just going to shift that one over manually because it's obviously clipping through the building there. Based on the orientation of your camera, actually, so you have to, like, really orientate up next to it correctly. There we go. Alright. Let's take a look at this place in a bit more detail. So that's our child healthcare center. We then have, like, a little flower garden. And then our elementary school. Very bougie. I don't know if any of this is quite realistic, but I'm happy with how functionally it's working. Then we have our self-sufficient buildings. Interesting looking buildings. They've got more wood and more modern look to them, I guess, on it. Yeah, a few more solar panels, things like that. Makes sense. Then we get into the more offices. The office space is down along this middle bit. Those ones look really nice. Yeah, some nice looking buildings here. I'm not a fan of the big tourist things, though. I, w I would like it if it all looked like this. This would be perfect. Because then we'd actually have a very natural... Uh, sort of the, s the skyline would kind of naturally like fall down towards these buildings. And then rise back up probably around it, you know? So I do think those are heavily... Misplaced. Like, I'm happy to destroy them and just keep re-rolling. Because they can't upgrade. So more stuff like this, the better, I think. Maybe one or two mid-sized ones like this. Oh, you know what would be also great? I know it would be perfect here. A city hotel. Hells yeah. Let's put it out on the big main road. This is a perfect location. Shopping, converging with business, and sightseeing. Oh my god. We might want to put in a couple of these, actually. 
And then we can uh, change its height, right? It's a bit smaller than that. There we go. Perfect. Oh, they're going to be loving it. Perfect confluence building for them. Just everything maxed out immediately. Super happy. And then I imagine we'll hit that money threshold really soon then, when people start moving into that one. Uh, I might do the same here, although... That's the residential zone landmark. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice building, too. Yeah, gonna reroll that one and that one. See what we get. Don't mind... Oh, this one's on fire. Oh, no, it's not. The small one behind it's on fire. Which isn't funny. People's lives are on the line out there. This actually says hotel. Alright, I think we're going to have to leave it there and see how we get on with a little bit of growth for maybe just I'll let time play a couple weeks. I don't want to have another match day happen without you seeing it though. And then I'll start experimenting around with the sizes of buildings and think about where things could go. If you got any feedback, be as harsh as you like. I, you know, to be harsh on myself, I would say it's a little plain looking. You know, it's very grid-like. I'm not really sure you designed it out that way. I mean, for path, you think for roads, this is actually a good traffic network because it's very grid-like. But for pathways where people are just walking... It's a bit unnecessary to do it that way. Um, but I just wasn't really too sure how else to do it, I guess. Kind of just free ball. <laughs> I'm just saying it again, haven't I? I free balled it. That's going to be my new catchphrase. Apparently that means stuff that I, I didn't really know. <laughs> that people pointed out to me in the previous episode. But uh, I'd say just continue to say it. What, what does it matter? It means whatever I want it to mean. And it doesn't mean that. Or does it? How much money are we up to now? 11,800. Yep. All right. I think... Uh, on that awkward note, we'll leave it, and uh, that'll have to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.